there are celebrations as a result of our Harvey Milk Day here in California, not only up and down the state of California this Saturday, but around the world as a result of what we did here in Sacramento. So a lot to be proud of, a lot to celebrate, but Cleve is right. As long as we don't have equal marriage rights, as long as we cannot serve openly and honestly in the military, we are by definition second-class citizens in this country. We forget that here in California because of all the success of legislative successes we've had in recent years. But federally, nationally, second-class citizens. Throughout history, basic tenets of citizenship have been the right to marry and the right to serve in the military. Slaves were denied the right to marry or the right to serve in the military. You can denigrate an entire group of individuals by just denying those two things. And I think it speaks to why our adversaries, the radical religious right, fight so adamantly to deny us those basic tenets because they know if they fall, the dark, dangerous 20th century, closeted 20th century, they want to drag us back into will not be possible. You know, I've also thought why those same crazy folks work so hard to defeat our Harvey Milk Bill. And I want to thank Deborah Jones for coming to committee one day and testifying. She had the room in tears telling her story, how she had to toil under Cleve's thumb day after day. <laughs> No, she told the <laughs> she she told the story of of what it was like being able to volunteer in Harvey's office and work with Cleve, and she brought a real historic perspective to it. And Lance Black was in that committee hearing room as well. We thank Lance for helping us. And you know, Lance was sitting uh, by my side the day that we got our one and only. Why should? The passage of the Harvey Milk Day bill had been a partisan issue. Think about it. It's ridiculous. And we got our one and only Republican voting committee that day, and that was uh, Abel Maldonado. But they came up with some of the most twisted arguments. But why wouldn't we want to formally, officially recognize the life and work of the very first Californian, openly LGBT Californian, to get elected to public office. That's a historic moment. And the history book should reflect it. And children should learn about it. You know, a lot of this day, it's about the kids. We want them to ask questions. We want them to know. And we want our queer youth to know that there's a reason for them to have hope for their future. And his message of hope continues to resonate.